trying to help as many people as possible. That is the mission of a local man who, after nearly two decades in prison, wants to follow a new calling. Yeah, and, and he isn't getting his business off the ground without some help. John Schoenheider shares his story and how he's spreading his faith. John. Amber Tyler Stephen Snook grew up in extreme poverty during his childhood in Danville, Illinois. After years of crime, he was arrested by the DEA at the age of 26, sentenced to more than 20 years in federal prison. For some, that sounds like the worst punishment possible, but for him, it was an opportunity. This is the home where Stephen Snook grew up, or what's left of it. An upbringing of poverty and abuse that would lead into a life of crime and 19 years in federal prison. That time brought a change in perspective. I was trapped in that cycle and I didn't know any way out. There was nowhere else for me to turn, so I turned to the Lord. Snook finding faith behind bars, speaking and converting fellow convicts within solitary confinement. Through his mission, he found revelation. That made a powerful impact. You know, they would become hungry for God. If I could get them to become hungry for God and get them to start fasting and praying more often, the, the change was radical. Snook re-entered the world with a purpose. That led him to Peoria Next, a startup incubator accessed through Bradley University. You could tell that he was really focused on, I want to make this thing happen. His idea? Keeping the scripture at the center of the household through digital photo frames. He says it came to him in a dream while serving his time and became a priority once he got out. But the world had changed since Snook saw it last. Little did I know in that early call, right, that Stephen uh, would be coming into a world that, you know, he hadn't uh, experienced for 20 years, right? The, the iPhone wasn't here. Emails are new. Mike Stubbs at Peoria Next took him in, showing him the ins and outs of starting a business in the modern world. It shows that no matter who you are, right, you can create a company, you can create a new life, you can create a new opportunity. Snook wants to thrive outside the frame. For me, it's bigger than a business. This is a mission. This is something that I've dedicated my life to. He's in the process of writing a book he began while doing time and has shared his life story with over a dozen podcasts. All of that just nine months after getting out. What I'm trying to do with everything that's in me is, is help change in an impactful and positive way as many lives as possible. Through my life story, through the scripture frames, um, opportunities to speak with people about how the Lord has changed my life. Tomorrow is Stephen's first Thanksgiving as a free man since 2002. On the eve of the holiday, I asked him today what he was most grateful for in light of everything that he's experienced. And he told me the biggest message he has is to not take your family for granted and enjoy the time that you have with them here and now as much as possible. After being targeted by vandals more than once, a peak and shop owner is taking video of what happened public. Good Monday evening. I'm Tyler Lopez. And I'm Amber Kriska. Thank you for joining us. Oil and what appear to be religious symbols are some of the reasons this shopkeeper feels singled out. John Schoenheider is live in the newsroom with tonight's top story. John. Amber Tyler, Megan Matthews is the co-owner of Eye of Newt in Pekin. She describes it as a metaphysical shop, as well as a place for anyone to come in and talk in a safe environment. But these recent incidents are putting her own safety in question. Megan Matthews opened Eye of Newt this past April. What began as a hobby during the pandemic became something much bigger, a store for spiritual items and offerings. But last week, it had some unwelcome visitors. We're in 2022. We're not in the medieval days when <laughs> you go after people that don't follow mainstream. Surveillance footage captured last Monday night shows a group of people walking around for several minutes, making gestures and chanting. We've blurred their faces for discretion. When Matthews came back the next day, she found what she describes as a, quote, oily mixture thrown on the windows. You... Don't attack people for who they are, or for what they believe. Later last week, she found more oil on the glass, this time in the shape of crosses and crucifixes. Her camera on that side of the storefront wasn't set up, so she couldn't see who did it. Matthews writing a response to the vandals that she was planning to put on the door. Crucifixes won't harm me or rebuke me. They are useless against those that are not evil.
For Matthews and her co-owner, the store offers more than just items for purchase. It provides a space for those looking for spiritual guidance to gather and speak where they feel secure. Matthews filed a suspicious person report with Pekin Police, who confirmed the details she provided to us. Now, she has a message not just for the vandals, but for the community. We need to learn diversity without division. And once we do that, we can start healing everything that is wrong with this world. <laughs> Now, Pekin police tell us they're increasing patrols around the store to prevent anything like this from happening again. We'll also have resources online later tonight where you can learn more about Matthew's store. Just visit 25newsnow.com.